Oh, wow, someone left our trash in here. Hey, hey everyone. For this video, I'm gonna take the Sony ZV-1, which I'm recording on right now, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and compare how their auto photos do using their main camera and telephoto camera. Now, the reason I'm not gonna use the ultra wide for the iPhone 13 Pro Max is because the Sony ZV-1 only has a focal range of 24 to 70 millimeter. So we will stick with those two. Let's get this comparison going. The Sony ZV-1 uses mostly traditional hardware-centric methods to produce its photos. Its advantage over the iPhone 13 Pro Max is its 1.0 type stacked sensor, multiple apertures, and optically stabilized zoom up to its max focal length of 70 millimeters. The iPhone 13 Pro Max may have tiny sensors and lenses with one aperture for its camera system, but makes up for it with advanced algorithms and computational processing for its photos. So, can the computational magic of the iPhone 13 Pro Max match or beat the photos from the brawny hardware flexing ZV-1? Let's find out. For this shot on the Sony ZV-1, when I pushed out the focal length to 70 millimeter, it was doing some focus hunting. So. I had to move the camera back and forth to get it to stop. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it locked on right away and it was very fast to take the picture. Always land with both of your feet spread apart. So I started this video at around 11 a.m. It's almost noon now, so, <coughs> excuse me there, <laughs> I still have a little bit of that COVID lift. Some people say this is a bad idea to take photos, and I understand why. You can see a lot of the shots come out uh, bright, overexposed, and they lack color. But for someone like me, this is probably the only time I'm gonna be able to, to take pics today, because later on I have to go in work on some more videos. So don't worry about the time of day or night you take photos. If I was to do this properly, I'm gonna throw an ND filter on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I'm gonna put this one into manual mode and use the ND filter so I can record in environments like this. Yeah, the background blur for this shot looks awesome on the ZV-1 here on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Eh, not that great. I almost fell down this hole. Oh my goodness, that would have sucked. Should always be aware of your surroundings when taking pictures.
So the battery is about to go here on my Sony ZV-1. So let's wrap up this photo shoot, head back to my micro studio, throw these files onto my computer and let's see how they compare to each other. I was on the way home, but got a little bit hungry. So I stopped by the mall so I can get something to eat. This is a great opportunity to see how both of these cameras do when it comes to taking pictures of food. Now, this is something that I normally don't do, but I know many people enjoy doing it. So let's see which one has the better pictures. I think I'm done here. I'm really gonna go home this time. So let's go check out these uh, photos and see how they compare against each other. Did the iPhone 13 Pro Max with its advanced computational photography match or beat photos from the ZV-1? I'm gonna say no. Next to the ZV-1, pictures from the iPhone's 26 and 77 millimeter lenses looked heavily processed creating a hard, sharpened, ultra-realistic look. Pictures from the ZV-1's 24 and 70 millimeter focal lengths looked softer, but more natural and similar to what I saw in person. The iPhone also suffered frequent harsh lens flaring. Background blur using the iPhone's 77 millimeter lens on close subjects didn't have good separation and had too much detail. It seemed its tiny sensor and lens held it back despite advanced computational processing. The ZV-1 did an excellent job with the 70mm focal length and larger sensor, keeping close subjects and the background soft and nicely separated. In low light, photos from the iPhone's 26 and 77mm lenses were soft, lacking the sharp punch and saturated colors of well-lit ones. The iPhone's tiny sensors and lenses still struggle in low light despite all of the ultra processing wizardry to compensate for them. The 1.0 type stacked sensor and larger lens system of the ZV-1 in low light helped create well lit pictures with good sharpness, nice saturation, contrast and rich colors. You can even see this in some of the low light videos. So the brawny hardware of the ZV-1 had an edge over the brainy photo processing of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And despite losing to the ZV-1 in picture quality in bright sunlight and low light, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has superior advantages that have attracted more people to Apple for an all-purpose camera. But there's one more thing, 
And no, it's not how fast my hair and beard grew out compared to the last scene. There is one significant advantage the iPhone 13 Pro Max has over the ZV-1, and that's a photo taking experience. Watch how easy it is for me to take a photo compared to the ZV-1. Entering the camera app, framing my shot, press the button. If I wanna go ahead and upload this to my social media account, there. And did you see how easy and fast that was to share a great photo online? Now let's try that with the ZV-1. This is video from the iPhone 13 Pro Max and you can tell that recording in windy conditions with it is a bad idea. For this portion of the video, I was trying to explain that taking photos with the ZV-1 is not as quick and simple as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. There's a lot of buttons and dials you have to push, extra menus you have to get into, and if you want to load photos from the ZV-1 to social media, you're gonna have to take an Android device such as my Sony Xperia Pro i, download a Sony app to that, and then connect it to the ZV-1, import the photos from there to the Xperia Pro i or Android smartphone, and then you can upload your photos. So you can see sharing photos to social media is another time consuming process, which probably will throw off most people from using it. All right, so leave in the comments which one of these devices you felt had the better image quality and which one of these devices you prefer for taking photos. Please tap that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so. And until next time, stay safe, keep learning. I'll see you in the next video.